Check my clock, I can't stop. Fuck around, make my 40 pop. No pop con, I pop pistols, beaming my body. Alright guys, this episode was absolutely amazing. I know it's like kind of impossible, but I just really wish every single episode was as this hype and of course animated this well. This episode arguably was like one of the best episodes since episode 65. If you guys don't really remember or don't know what episode 65 was, it was the episode when Naruto and Sasuke fought against Momoshiki. And that episode right there is definitely regarded as the best episode of Boruto so far. This episode, episode 175, even kind of rivals that, especially because Team 7 was the focal point in this particular episode. Now ironically, the first thing that I do want to talk about is not about Team 7, it's about Orochimaru basically joining the battle and fighting against Victor in this particular episode. Now I do want to point out, this episode would have been amazing even without the appearance of Orochimaru. Orochimaru coming was just like literally the addition. Of course, a lot of people did want to see Orochimaru battle because we didn't really get to see him fight since Naruto Japoon. And of course, we understand that Orochimaru himself is a very good character. And not only that, we got to see him fight against a very good character as well, a member of the Intercada organization. So we could kind of see how Orochimaru stacks up versus an inner member of the Kata organization. Now, I do want to point out, of course, Victor is most likely going to be like one of the weakest members or the weakest member of the Kata organization. But regardless, it was still a good way to check the temperature of the inner members of the Kata organization. At first things first, Orochimaru comes in and he saves Konohamaru's life. I think this right here was definitely a very good addition from the Boruto Riders. First things first, we have to understand, Konohamaru's grandfather was the third Hokage, which Orochimaru literally killed, or Orochimaru forced the third Hokage to seal himself. And in my opinion, I feel like the Boruto Riders were definitely playing with a lot of people's emotions. At first, Orochimaru made it clear that he wasn't there to save Konohamaru or anything like that. But let's be honest, if Orochimaru didn't step in when he did, Konohamaru would be completely dead. Orochimaru could have literally just sat back and had Victor kill Konohamaru right then and there because Victor was definitely like a millisecond away from killing Konohamaru. Orochimaru could have just let that happen and then beat Victor. So of course Orochimaru did kind of feel some sort of need to actually save Konohamaru's life. And not only that, the grandfathers of the Naruto series remember the third Hokage took his life to basically take away Orochimaru's arms. In this particular fight, Orochimaru got his arm completely chopped off by the lightning and he just completely regenerated. I don't really know about you guys, but I personally feel like that was definitely a shot at the third Hokage, which is absolutely insane. Insane. The craziest part about this battle is the fact that I don't even really think that Orochimaru showed everything that he could possibly do and he basically had Victor on the rope. Like Victor was completely useless. He couldn't really do anything against Orochimaru. Not only that, Orochimaru's summoning jutsu was extremely effective in this battle. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, that summoning jutsu brought me back to the towns when Boruto had Garag, if you guys don't necessarily recall, back when we was at the Mitsuki retrieval arc when Mitsuki wanted to go quote unquote rogue, Boruto had a summoning jutsu called Garag, which was a snake and he was basically the best snake or the toughest snake in the Ryuchi cave and of course because of that he'd probably be able to do exactly what this snake and this summoning jutsu did with Orochimaru so of course he'd probably be a very good addition to Boruto's side he probably would have helped Boruto immensely in the battle versus Deepa but enough about the past generation characters I do want to talk about team 7 versus Deepa now first things first I do want to point out I wasn't necessarily a fan of Deepa dying to team 7 but the Boruto riders did it in a way that I could kind of accept this battle right here is probably one of my favorite battles in the whole Boruto series first of all so of course Deepa having this death was a little bit more palatable not only that the biggest takeaway from this battle is going to of course be Sada getting her second Tomo of the Shinigan. Now this right here has been something that a lot of people have been begging for for a very long time and it finally happened in the episode 175. A lot of people thought it was going to happen a lot earlier just because of the fact that Sasuke himself getting his second Tomo a lot earlier on. Now another thing about Sada's eyes in this episode, it didn't get nearly as fatigued as it was in the first battle against Deepa and of course that just goes as a testament to what she was doing in the training. Which was kind of funny Malum because in training it made it seem like Sada didn't necessarily get better in terms of stamina. Stamina, but I'm guessing the second Tomo kind of boosts the stamina of the Sharingan that Sada has, which I definitely accept. Deepa, in my opinion, 1000% did not necessarily disappoint. The only thing that I didn't really like about Deepa is, is similar to what I didn't really like about Urushiki. In this particular episode, Deepa was kind of playing around with Team 7 a lot. Now, don't get me wrong, I don't really want to take away from what Team 7 actually did. They definitely showed up. They definitely showed up and beat Deepa fair and square. But Deepa in this particular episode, and it might just be the way that he fights, but he wants to play with his opponent, he wants to basically see them have fear in their eyes, he wants to basically demoralize his enemies. I feel like if Deepa was 100% going for the kill and trying to basically destroy them and basically end this as quick as possible, he would have done that. He would have definitely been able to do that. But by far, one of the best scenes in this episode was Mitsuki's appearance. At this particular point, of course, we understand that Boruto has plot armor. He's probably not going to die in this particular situation. But we didn't really know it was going to be Mitsuki right then and there. I really thought that Log was going to get involved and this was going to be the first time that we really seen Log in action. Not 
not only that, we'd see him in action versus a very strong opponent, which is Deepa. But it turns out that it was Mitsuki. And of course, it was definitely a lot better for the overall episode. Mitsuki is a part of Team 7 with the new generation. But regardless, that was definitely a very fun and exciting point in the episode. And the writers knew exactly what they were doing, mainly because Mitsuki showed up with a mask and a robe. Of course, no one could really figure out who his true identity was until he took everything off. And of course, that just delayed the overall excitement from a lot of the fans out there. One of the biggest factors in this battle is, of course, Boruto's new Rasengan. And the first time that he did use it, it definitely did do a little bit of damage to Deepa. But I thought because Deepa got hit with it the first time, he probably wouldn't necessarily get hit with it directly dead on the second time. Turns out I was completely wrong. But before I get to that final blow, I do want to kind of talk about something else that cracked Deepa's armor a tiny bit, which was Sada's punch. Obviously, Sada overall punches extremely hard. But one of the things that we did find out during the training is the fact that she doesn't necessarily have quote unquote perfect chakra control. Sakura on the other hand, she does have that. In this particular episode, I think the board Riders wanted to make it seem like she actually had that down pat because of the second Tomo and her Sharingan. Now it's not 100% confirmed and I really hope the board Riders do kind of expand on that. Maybe in the next episode she goes to Sakura and says, hey I mastered the perfect chakra control and then she could kind of demonstrate it to Sakura and then we could possibly understand that alright, now Sada's on the level of a Sakura or a Tsunade. I'll Obviously not that strong, but regardless, she now has the chakra control of those two as well. That would definitely be a very good sight to see. And not only that, another big thing that we can't necessarily confirm as of right now is the fact that Boruto had a lot of shadow clones early on in the battle. Now I did count them and it was 11 of them. Now they all came at once, big pause big big pause but it made it seem like he was able to use 11 shadow clones at once some people on twitter kind of gave me the explanation of how of course boruto's limit is now at four it's very possible that boruto just summoned four shadow clones and then summoned another four shadow clones and then summoned another three that's definitely possible as well but in my opinion because we're getting a lot of character development it would not surprise me at all if boruto's shadow clone number was up the tiny bit even if it was up to like five or six definitely wouldn't surprise me at all now into deepest final form deepest final form in my opinion i think it was fine i'm not gonna lie to you guys i thought it was very good but one of the things that i really want to see i just like how he encases his whole body into like that kind of white and black kind of carbon bonds i really hope that he encased his whole body into the diamond thing that he did kind of encase his arm with when he did try to block the rasengan but regardless deeper did i could say that that form right there wasn't necessarily complete he didn't really have 100 percent confidence in but he did say it was kind of adequate to beat team seven just from what we were seeing and of course deep was a little bit distraught man because the god tree is falling apart before deep was even hit that form was already cracking so i'm like yo i don't know if this right here is a very good idea chief but regardless, Boruto starts WK and deeper with the Rasengan, and you really seen the result from Boruto on this particular scene, man, because he understood if he used that Rasengan again, his armor literally probably fall off at that particular point. We already established the fact that that Rasengan in particular doesn't necessarily do well with Boruto's arm. His arm is already affected because of the first time that he used the Rasengan against Deepa, and he's going to use it again. So of course, that basically shows you what Boruto is willing to lose in regards to beating Deepa. And of course, it just took it over the top when team seven helped boruto out on this rasengan mitsuki entered his sage mode that right there was absolutely insane mitsuki understands the ramifications of using the sage mode mainly because he himself basically put his own brother log into the hospital from giving him some organ donations but regardless he was like bump that i gotta help out my god boruto and of course sada also jumped in and chimed in the art style the animation everything was just absolutely top notch i'm pretty sure this episode similar to episode 165 is going to be literally a legendary episode in the series of Boruto. Now, the overall things that I do want to talk about in terms of Deepa and Victor, I'm not going to lie to you guys. I don't think that they're dead. I think, of course, they're defeated, but in terms of them actually being dead, I don't think that that's the situation. And I think Orochimaru and Konohamaru didn't really do the best mainly because they should have done due diligence to actually defeat them or even capture them they just let them be of course they think that victor is dead mainly because victor got swallowed up by the quote-unquote fake god tree they kind of assumed that deeper was done mainly because he wasn't really moving he got collapsed in the building they just assume that they're finished i definitely do not think that's the situation i just don't think that you let strong characters like that just walk free all willy nilly of course they're not literally walking free but you guys get what i'm saying we did also kind of find out that this right here wasn't necessarily a huge plot to help the kind of organization this right here was specifically for victor and deeper i will get into it a little bit more when i do make a video talking about the whole entire arc 
But regardless, I think that that right there is definitely a very important thing to point out, mainly because we're going to be going into a lot more of the Kata organization heavy stuff. To wrap things up, I do want to know what you guys think about this episode in the comment section below. As I said, I personally think it's probably like the second best episode of Boruto so far. Where do you guys think this episode ranks? And also give me your favorite moment of this Boruto episode. My personal favorite moment has to be the last moment when we did see the Team 7 Rasengan, that super compression Rasengan versus Deepa to actually end the whole thing. But let me know what you guys think. It's been your boy, Barbie, and we out. It's a knife.